Hello everybody, this is Swati Gupta, Chartered Accountant. Welcome to lecture number 15. We'll continue from the point where we left in lecture number 14, okay? We were discussing India's 115. Let's see and head towards next concept of India's 115. That is, whenever you are entering into a contract with a customer and you have received revenue, but it is in kind, that is in non-cash form, then how to record in the books of accounts, okay? Simply, if you have received any sort of non-cash consideration, then it will be fair valued and recorded in the books of accounts, okay? This is what India's 115 says. Now, how the fair valuation will be done? It is given and mentioned in India's 113, okay? How to do it? It is given in India's 113, okay? Whereas, if you talk about when to do it, it is provided uh, in every particular India's. So, about non-cash consideration, you have to follow fair valuation for every non-cash consideration that is received as a revenue form whenever you are doing contract with any customer, okay? And subsequent, any change in the fair valuation of the particular non-cash -consider, non consideration will not be considered, will be ignored, okay? Now, next, see, simply fair valuation will be done, okay? And subsequent change will not be considered. Next, if we talk about if customers provide any goods or services, okay, what is it? Simply, if you are doing any contract with a customer, okay, and that customer itself provides what? Any sort of material or any sort of tools, equipments, along with the contract, okay, along with the consideration, then such tools, such raw material will also be recorded as revenue if the control has been transferred and it will be valued at the fair value, okay? For example, any job work contract is there and the customer has given their own material that please entity uh, print my material, okay? Or dye my material and he has given his own tools, his own dye, his own raw material, okay? If the ownership is being transferred, if control is transferred, okay? More, more importantly, control is transferred, okay? then such raw material, such dyes, such tools will also be recorded as part of revenue, will also be included in the transaction price at what amount? At the fair value. And how to do the fair valuation is mentioned in India's 113. I hope I am clear. Okay, in case of doubt, please ask. Next comes slotting fees. What is it? For example, if you go to any uh, grocery store, okay, there are at times particular sections provided which are related and directly related to a particular brand. For example, they will provide Surf Excel. A whole cabinet will be tagged and will be labeled. Will the pro all sort of products, all sizes of the products will be kept in one particular place, okay? And it is whole. This is known as slotting fees. At times, the uh, at times there are entities or there are brands that provide some fees to the shopkeeper, to the seller for keeping a separate slot or separate section for that particular brand. Okay, this is known as slotting fees. Let's read it. Manufacturers or consumer pro of consumer products, okay, commonly pay retailers fees to have their goods displayed prominently on store shelves, online catalogs, etc. Generally, such fees do not provide a distinct good or service to the manufacturer and are treated as reduction in the transaction price, okay? So, for example, a shopkeeper is there and a brand has approached, okay? So, the brand is selling the products, okay? Uh, for example, they have given 100 items. The shopkeeper will be giving a consideration in return that. But now, there is also a cross arrangement of slotting fees. The brand is asking that, please provide me this particular uh, section of your shelf of your department, okay? And I will be providing rupees 1000 rupees for such uh, slot, okay? Then now, the, cust uh, the shopkeeper here, who is a buyer in this case, will be deducting such 1000 rupees that he has received in uh, regard of the slot as a slotting fees, will be deducted from the transaction price he will deduct that 1000 rupees from the net amount that he has to pay to that particular brand okay are you clear this is not a particular separate any goods or service okay therefore it is reduced from the transaction price what is transaction price transaction transaction price is simply the price that the seller is expecting to get to receive in return 
of this performance obligation on completing the performance obligation okay next consideration payable to customer if there are any certain cashback discount vouchers etc it uh, in relation to which there has to be a payment made to the customer itself okay for example the amount is of 10000 rupees as an entity you will be receiving uh, 10000 rupees from the customer but because of some voucher discount or any scheme going on you have to return rupees 1500 to that particular customer then what happens then see if it is related to any distinct goods and services separate goods and services goods and services that have a capacity to be used on their own or by using the uh, uh, present already present uh, goods and uh, resources okay it is the definition of distinct goods and services if they have a capacity to be used on their own or can be used by you by using the available resources okay so if it is in relation to any distinct goods and services then you have to see that does the consideration exceed the fair value does it exceed the fair value of that particular goods and services okay if yes then account as a reduction in the transaction price the transaction price that you will be receiving okay deducted from there if from the customer you were supposed to uh, get rupees 1000 for example okay you were supposed to get from customer from customer this is just an example to understand it better rupees 1 uh, rupees 10000 for example okay and now in return because of cash back you have to pay him rupees 1500 okay so if it is related to distinct goods and services and if the consideration is greater than the fair value then what you will do you will simply deduct it from the transaction price and net amount will be recorded as revenue whereas if we talk about like the consideration does not exceed the fair value it is equal or lesser then you will account it for the purchase of goods and services and same of purchase for from supplier okay it will be recorded as separate purchase it will be recorded as separate purchase okay now if the particular voucher cash back or the discounts or any sort of payment that is being made to the customer is not related to uh, is not related to distinct goods and services that means the traded goods and services are not distinct okay they have no capacity to be used on their own then simply there is only one way to be reduced from the transaction price that is this particular way will be done okay will be followed the amount that you will be receiving from customer and the amount that you have to pay will be netted out the amount that you have to pay will be deducted from the transaction price are you clear if you are clear please in the chat box write clear and let me know that the concept is reaching your head or not okay is it hitting right or not okay next can we move ahead okay allocation of variable consideration as you know there are five steps of revenue recognition whenever there is a variable consideration or the consideration that is related to multiple purchase obligations okay so there is one transaction price and there are multiple purchase obligations and this need to be allocated to particular performance obligation okay if the consideration is variable then how will you allocate okay so your a solution is given for recording the revenue when the variable consideration is there in the transaction so if such variable consideration is related to specifically to a particular performance obligation then record it allocate it only to that particular obligation okay for example there are three or four particular uh, four, four performance obligation okay so there is a common amount there is a transaction price of rupees 1 lakh for all the four performance obligation but there is uh, it has been told that 90000 are for the remaining and 10000 is particularly for the performance obligation 1 if it is directly and specifically identified to a particular uh, performance obligation then you will separate it then you will separate it and directly allocate to that particular performance obligation okay and the remaining will be allocated according to the uh, sales consideration basis okay now if it is not related to performance obligation not related then allocate on the basis of stand alone price stand alone price is the price that you would have charged to any passing customer okay any passing customer okay passes by the amount that you will be charging from a strange any passing customer is the stand alone price 
ओके इट हैज नो इन्फ्लुएंस नो बायसनेस नो पार्शलिटी नेक्स्ट कम्स एस चेंज इन ट्रांजेक्शन प्राइस ओके फर्दर इफ देर इज एनी इंक्रीमेंट डिक्रीमेंट और चेंज इन ट्रांजेक्शन प्राइस एज देर इज वेरिएबल कंसिडरेशन ऑल्सो इंक्लूडेड ओके देन हाउ टू रिकॉर्ड इन द बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स चेंज इन ट्रांजेक्शन प्राइस इज एलोकेटेड टू परफॉर्म टू परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्लिगेशन इन सिमिलर वे एज अर्लियर ओके इफ इट इज रिकॉर्डेड टू परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्लिगेशन स्पेसिफिकली देन रिड्यूस इट और इंक्रीज इट फ्रॉम इन दैट पर्टिकुलर परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्लिगेशन इफ नॉट रिलेटेड देन देन decrease or increase or change will be made in the proportionate amount okay and the proportion will be in proportion to the sales consideration okay stand alone price you can say stand alone price now the stand alone selling price must be same as earlier okay do not uh, consider new stand alone price okay it should be same stand alone price that was earlier first time recorded okay so such proportionate basis will be done in the same ratio as was done in the first time record okay are you clear so stand alone price will not change this is very good uh, important point okay to understand it better and to have some examples please wait for the next lecture we will be discussing all the examples present in the icai okay there you will get a very deep and better understanding about whole concept of india's 115 even if you are professional you will be in a state you will be so prepared that you can crack any sort of interview or apply it any sort of uh, balance sheet or pnl okay this is not just for exam purpose and if you are preparing for exam purpose please do revise icai question answers multiple times as many times as possible okay let me know anything that you want to know about the course or uh, any sort of query or any suggestion please note it down and write it down in the comment box okay i'm looking forward to grab a little insight from your head your perspective okay if uh, due to change if due to change in transaction price contract is modified okay as you know we have seen when contract is uh, amounted as modification and when it is not Uh, counted as modification and uh, included in the initial contract itself okay so if it is modified then accounting is made as contract modification if any modification is done then it will be recorded as the modification okay as per the modification uh, uh, provisions that we have discussed beforehand itself okay now next simple chart is given the same sum up has been given over here okay please look into this very carefully firstly you will check that is the consideration payable to the customer a payment for a distinct goods or service for the customer is it payable for distinct goods and services if yes then you will see if it is uh, uh, if it is uh, exceeding the fair value or not if it is no then simply the transaction price will be reduced now uh, okay this a uh, particular summary is related to your page number uh, 47 okay if it is distinct or not yes then you will further see that consideration exceeds or not okay now if consideration exceeds the fair value okay yes then particular excess portion as reduction in the transaction price and if no then purchase will be recorded separately as done with the similar supplier okay as recorded as per the previous purchases done with the previous supplier okay same other purchases from the supplier now satisfying performance obligation now at times there is an entity that transfers the control of an asset maybe it is a qualifying asset what is qualifying asset that takes multiple time okay a large period of time to get Uh, to be eligible to put in use to be ready to put in use okay so if there is a qualifying asset or it is being uh, transferred in bits and parts okay there can be different types of control transfer now it can be either over the period of time or at point in time whenever there is over the period of time how it is uh, differentiated whether it is over the period of time or at point of time we'll discuss a little later in this video itself okay but important point over here is that whenever it is over the period of time whenever the control of transfer of the such asset from entity to the customer is over the period of time you will follow percentage completion method okay if uh, 30% has been transferred then 30% will be recorded as revenue okay percentage completion method whereas if at point of time then you will be recording revenue when contract gets completed 
Okay, are you clear? Now we will discuss when it is over the period of time and when it is at point of time. Okay, this is all related to the revenue recognition when we are entering into any contract with the customer. Okay, are you able to connect it? If you are able to connect it, you will find it very easy. If not, then this will eat up your head and still you will not get to know it. Okay, so please try to relate things. Now let's see. Satisfying performance obligation, what is it? Access to intellectual property, if it is over time or at point of time, if we just talk about intellectual property, then these are three points that keep, needs to be kept in mind. And all three needs to be met. If all three criteria are met, then it will be considered as over time, over the period of time. And if uh, none of the criteria or this, if all three criteria for access are not met, then it will be considered at point on time. If you understand this very well, okay, same ICI questions are also available, ICI examples are also available. But before solving that, you really need to know all these three points. What are those? Firstly, the entity is required or reasonably expected to undertake activities significantly affected the license IP. Okay, they are the entity is responsible. The entity is expected to take, uh, to overtake or you can say to engage, to get engaged in all sorts of activities that will impact the IP, that will impact that particular intellectual property, okay. So if the entity is required or entity is held responsible or entity is expected to carry on the activities that will significantly, that is vastly impact the IP first. Second, the license exposes the customer to any effects of the ent entity's activities. It somehow impacts or exposes the customer, okay. If there is increase or increase, uh, increase or decrease, okay, any change is there, it directly impacts the customer. It directly exposes the customer, okay. So, entity is held responsible and it impacts the customer. Second, thirdly, the entity's activities are not performance obligation under the contract. These are not these activities are not performance obligations, okay. If three of the conditions are met, then it will be said that it is over the period of time. Other than that, it will be considered as point in time. Please have little patience, you will get to know this a little better when we read examples also of ICI, okay. So, don't forget to watch the further lectures as well to get a complete overview and complete understanding of India's 115, okay. If all three criteria for access over time are not met, okay. The nature the entity promise is to provide a right to use, okay. It will be held that it is providing just a right to use, it is not providing access to the IP, okay. It is not transferring control. As the IP exists at the point in time, the license is granted to the customer. Effectively, this means that customer is able, sorry, customer is able to direct the use. Okay, customer is able to direct the use of and obtain all remaining benefits from the licensed IP when granted. Okay, that means the customer is having all sort of freedom, is, is liable to what? To directly, uh, uh, to direct the use of it. For example, there is an IP. Okay, customer has got and control that now he can direct that how to use it, when to use it, who can use it, he can even restrict others from using it. If yes, then it will be turned, turned into as that only right to use in the IP has been given. Access to IP will be there when it is over time, okay. Over time, over the period of time is also named as access to IP. Whereas point in time is used, uh, is also termed as right to use the IP, okay. These are three particular conditions that if met, then over the period of time, if not met, then it will be considered as point in time. Now, meaning of control of an asset, you know this. Control means either direct the use of the remaining benefits in the asset, okay. He can say that when to scrap it, when to sell it, when to keep it, where to keep it, or which entity can use it, or which plant can use it, whether third party can use it or not, okay. It is directing, it is having control to direct or instruct the use of that particular asset. 
secondly the ability to prevent others from you the use okay for example anything that is in ownership of yours okay for example anything this pen is in my ownership i have the ability to restrict any third person from using it okay is it similarly applies to any sort of asset okay similarly applies to the definition of control if you are able if you are in a position if you are in a state to uh, prevent others from using it then you are certainly having a control over it if you are in a state to direct the use of it then you are certainly in a position to uh, that you are certainly having a control of that asset okay next how to obtain the benefit from asset okay how it can be by using in the production or services increase the value of asset okay other asset settle liability and reduce expenses okay it can be by uh, settling any liability or reducing any expenses selling or exchange of asset if you are having any sort of cash what you will be doing for example learn it with cash okay if you are having any cash what you can do you can use in production of services you can increase the value of any other asset you can make uh, make any modification make any improvements settle any liability you can pay off any liability you can reduce any expenses okay how come reduce any expenses increase the asset or you can say by paying off what you can do you can uh, reduce the liabilities portion okay selling or exchange of any asset pledging asset and holding asset what is pledging asset if there is any immovable asset and you are keeping it as a collateral uh, sorry if there is any moving asset if there is any moving asset movable asset and you are keeping it as a collateral then it is termed as pledging of asset okay um, when is it is termed as mortgage when it is of Im immovable property okay so you are keeping something as mortgage or uh, sorry collateral collateral okay so if it is movable movable property then it is termed as pledge okay and if it is immovable then it is termed as mortgage okay so simply your second word can be termed as mortgage holding assets okay even you can hold that particular asset that is uh, for further use and all indicators of transfer of control when it will be considered that control has been transferred when it will be considered that control has been transferred when the customer has legal title of the asset asset delivered to the customer customer has significant risk and rewards okay the risk benefits awards should be transferred if yes then only we will say that control has been significantly transferred customer has accepted the asset entity has present right for payment of the asset now entity the seller entity or you can say the transferer has whole sole right to collect money to collect its payment in return of the performance obligation if yes then only we will say that the transfer of control has been done next performance obligation satisfied at point of time okay that is right to use point of time is right to use if any of the condition mentioned in point 6 is not satisfied then performance obligation is assumed to satisfied at a point in time three conditions are given okay it is further we will again summarize these points points given on page number 50 performance obligation satisfied over period of time okay if any of the following condition is satisfied then performance obligation is satisfied over the period of time conditions it should be simultaneously receive or consume it should be simultaneously received or consumed then the benefit provided by the entity performance as the entity perform okay for example a simple example a cable connection okay so the cable connection is uh, uh, the providing of the channel viewership is all provided and con simultaneously you are consuming the benefit of such channels okay next the entity perform performance create or enhance an asset either it is creating any asset or enhancing the existing asset that the customer control an asset is created at the enhanced wip that is pos okay now what important over here is for example you are creating any asset at the premise of the uh, client okay so that is condition 2 thirdly entity performance does not create asset with alternate use that is it is 
specifically customize for example you have a particular uh, suit coat okay three piece suit or you can say a lehenga okay whatever now you have gone to a boutique a particular tailor tailor stylist uh, stylist and they have uh, taken your measurement okay they have styled it according to your uh, physical physique okay now it is purely customized okay can it be used for anybody else uh, on the other hand if it, if it would have been a standard product then it can be sold to any other person it has alternative use okay so specifically it is being altered okay in such a way it is being customized in such a way that there is no alternative use if this particular entity purchases it then only uh, it will be sold out okay it will be sold out it will be having any revenue uh, generation other than that it cannot be sold to anybody else okay so if you are if the entity is creating such type of particular good or service that is exclusive that is uh, which has no alternative use then it will be considered as over the period of time other than this if any of the three conditions are not met then it will be said as point of point in time okay see performance obligation uh, satisfied over period of time very good examples are given for example the customer simultaneously receive and consumes the benefit for example routine or recurring services like cleaning services routine transaction processing services hotel management service continuously happening and continuously being uh, consumed okay entity's performance either creates or enhances the particular asset i uh, like building an asset on customer's site okay i told you uh, there also entity's performance does not create does not create an asset with an alternative use to the entity and the entity has an enforceable right to the payment for performance completed to date that is it is highly specialized highly customized and can uh, that only the customer can use or building an asset according to the customer specification highly customized okay next recognition of revenue whenever performance obligation is satisfied point of time okay if it is satisfied point of time then recognize revenue when the performance obligation is satisfied but now if we talk about it is over the period of time over the point of time over the period of time then there are two methods one is input method that is you uh, add on all the cost all the till date cost labor input to okay raw materials anything add it, add it and see how much it has been completed okay and then for example 30% cost has been incurred then 30% revenue can be recognized okay so it can be recognized on the basis of entity's effort that has been put in okay entity's efforts or the input amounts for example resources consumed cost incurred labor are expended machine are worked etc whereas output method it can be recognized recognized revenue on the direct basis of the measurement of value to the customer for goods and services transferred to date related to remaining goods and services promised in the contract either input method or output method but if it is in point in time you have to wait till the performance obligation is completely uh, completely done okay completely satisfied then only you can record in uh, the books of accounts okay you know that percentage completion method is there and your it can be immediately recorded survey work perform appraised of result achieved okay now for this particular recognition there is a survey need to be conducted okay there is particular expert comes in and says that yes particular asset is this much complete and now this near, this much revenue can be recognized okay particular expert survey needs to be done particular at time certificate of completion is required okay the percentage sub, uh, calculation is done by highly expert people and then it is proved that this much is completed and then the particular entity can recognize a particular per equivalent percentage of revenue okay next now comes is that whenever an entity is entering into a contract with customer there can be different 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 thousand types of clauses involved in it okay if there is a repurchase agreement for example you are the seller and you are doing a contract of selling a particular uh, for example television anything okay to a customer okay there has been contract okay now what happens is 
if there is a repurchase clause added to it okay for example then you have to record such thing as uh, in while recording the revenue how come firstly it will be considered as forward when the entity that means the seller that means the seller has obligation to repurchase it he is liable to repurchase it back okay there is a contract that after end of 5 years he has to in any how repurchase that particular asset okay pay back the remaining one next it will be considered as call option it is named as call option when the entity the seller entity has right to purchase repurchase the asset entity is having right to repurchase that asset it will be termed as call option if entity is having a obligation liability duty that they have to purchase they have to repurchase from that particular customer then it will be termed as forward contract okay forward and now and thirdly lastly entity has obligation to repurchase asset at customer request if customer makes a request then entity has to buy it has to repurchase it if this is the case then this will be known as put option this will be known as put option these are three names you really need to know them okay now a repurchase agreement is a contract in which entity sells an asset and also promises or has the option either in the same contract or in another contract to repurchase the asset they are given either the option or has full full uh, right or that they can repurchase the asset okay so there can be different types of arrangements while entering into the contract with customer now how to record the revenue we'll discuss just right now we first we'll talk about put option okay put option is that customer is requesting please entity please seller entity buy from me again please repurchase from it me i want to sell it back to you okay this is the case then this will be known as put option if this is the case then you need to compare what comparison that whether the repurchase price the price at which you are purchasing it the entity is repurchasing it is greater than the expected market price of that asset if yes then the particular difference will be the interest element will be recorded as interest element now if the repurchase price is equal to the expected market price okay then uh, we have to look into two matters if customer has significant economic incentive to exercise the right then it should be accounted as lease as per the lease standard now if customer does not have any significant economic incentive he is not receiving any sort of other related attached benefit if he is not receiving then it should be recorded as sale with right to return it should be recorded as sale with right to return if there is potentially significant high incentive for the customer to resell this back to the seller entity then it will be recorded as lease if there is no particular intensive incentive with the customer then it will be recorded as sale with return basis okay with right to return next if we talk about call or forward okay what is call and forward again see whenever there is obligation of the entity to repurchase it or whenever there is right of the entity to repurchase that particular asset from that customer okay now if such is the case then it is termed as call or forward now it will be treated as financial arrangement recognized consideration received as liability up to expiry of call term up to expiry of call term normally when repurchase price is more than contract price option is treated as finance arrangement normally whenever it is more than the contract price the option is treated as finance arrangement okay if it is more than finance arrangement the difference is always interest and now when it is finally being settled the liability that you have recorded will be derecognized will be removed from the from the balance sheet and then revenue will be recorded in contrast of it okay see when the option expires when it is completely option is expired then such liability will be removed and the revenue will be recognized now normally adjustment is done when repurchase price is less than the contract price if repurchase price is lesser than the contract price that has been dealt then the recognition then recognize revenue immediately ha, ha, immediately recorded in the books of accounts okay and this is practically not possible practically not feasible because nobody charges lesser when repurchasing okay 
Now, last topic comes is <coughs> service concession arrangement. For example, there is any uh, government, okay, they are planning to build a 1000 kilometer long uh, highway. Now, it always passes out tenders, opens out tenders, and then uh, uh, delivers or outsources it to multiple entities, okay, to some private entity, to some outsider, okay. They give a project that please particular entity please build a 1000 kilometer long uh, highway for me okay now this is known as service concession arrangement okay a sort of at times subsidies are given at times relaxations are given okay for example water okay water is given at subsidized rate gas cylinders are given these are all government setups okay these are known as service concession arrangement now government has multiple setups how it will be repaying that entity it can be in two ways it can be in two ways these two methods are termed differently okay accounting arrangement or accounting of that particular arrangement first is finance asset model what is it firstly under this model cost incurred by the entity is reimbursed by the government plus the margin that has been already agreed okay for example if government has said that entity a please build 1000 kilometer road the cost that will be incurred i will reimburse it plus i will give you 15 percent margin okay so for example the cost is rupees 1 lakh for example okay 1 lakh and 15 percent margin that is the government will pay 1 lakh 15 thousand this is known as finance asset model this is known as financial asset model are you clear amount will be reimbursed will be cost plus the margin interest is also calculated and accounted and on the amount due but now second type of arrangement is intangible asset model this is what the government says that the national highway after being constructed okay make it uh, open okay open it for public and start receiving toll it uh, the government permits the uh, uh, that particular entity a who has built the highway okay that you are eligible you are permitted to collect toll price okay toll taxes from the public okay on our behalf and the amount that you collect for example for next two years 20 years 15 years will be your revenue after that end of that particular 4 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever has been contracted, then transfer that particular highway in our name. Okay. So, there can be two types of repayment arrangements by the government. It can be firstly uh, reimbursing the basic cost and the margin, okay, profit margin. Secondly, it can be that they can ask or permit that particular uh, toll constructing company that start collecting toll from the public and then whatever amount that you are collecting is your revenue okay now in such case the cost that has been incurred will be treated as intangible asset okay if uh, entity you are that particular entity and government has said that you uh, collect toll from the public and this will be your revenue the cost that have been incurred already will be con considered as intangible asset in the books of accounts of that constructing entity are you clear please if you are clear write in the chat box clear okay for whole course please uh, check out the description box there are different links given for english and hindi separately okay there are whole courses same the content is same and is being recorded in hindi and english both the languages the material is provided along with the course in soft copies okay there is app given you can download it also this can be viewed on the laptops as well okay there is web login available there is no restriction on number of views and the validity is one year. Definitely check out the description box. Okay. Lastly, for this class, okay, we will be discussing car. What is it? Simple car. IFRS 15 says that the penalty should be included in the consideration. Whereas, India's 115 says that. Why it is 115? Because as you know, as you know that IFRS in India is numbered in 100 plus series okay so whenever it is 15 it will be numbered as 100 plus that is 115 okay so the india's 115 says that penalty included only and only when it is embedded in the contract that is it the provision 
or the clause for such penalty has been already written down in the contract. If it is embedded in the contract, if it is already provided as a clause in the contract, then only it will be considered as a part of the consideration. Other than that, it will not be considered while recording the revenue. Okay, that's all for India's 115. In the next lecture, we'll start our ICI question and answers, examples and illustrations. So stay tuned, take care, be safe. Okay, see you in the next lecture. Still then, take care, be safe, stay tuned.